This is the type of shit that I make these tournaments for. Because this is the type of shit that skilled players come up with when you put enough money on the line. <laughs> Alright, Drew is still playing. Where's Derpy Bidoof right now? Oh, we're at a Probo Pass v Probo Pass late game situation, but there is a Floatzel in the back. Pretty well. Introduce yourself to the stream. Hello, my name is Wolf. Uh, I play Pokemon VGC like Aaron, uh, and I'm here to, yeah, commentate some commentate some of this tournament. I really like the format, by the way. I was reading through the, uh, the rule set, and it's super cool. Oh, yeah, you, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of PP stalling between Probo Pass and Wormadam, I can tell you that for sure. And there's going to be a lot of speed ties between Heracrosses. All right, I think we're getting close to the end here. There's one rock throw left for uh, Derpy Voodoo. I should be coming out here. Yeah, one for him. Six PP total from the opposing Probo Pass, so. Okay, this is struggle. Let's struggle at least. Wait, could you get into the bailmate? Like, if they both struggle and never do enough damage? Um, like, struggle is always 25% recoil in this gen, luckily. In gen three though, like let's pretend yeah, yeah. like it was gen three struggle, would it just like be a stalemate? Yes, you would stalemate. That's so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're gonna break 300 turns it looks like. <laughs> yep. I hope so. Five more. Two more thunder waves. One more thunder wave. I think Drew just took it seriously what we said earlier that we should give a prize to the per person who has the longest match. <laughs> All right, that's all of them. It's that struggle time, baby. All right, there's the struggle from Dr. Phil. Let's see if the brick break was actually true on the Floatzel. There it is. 23%? Not bad. Oh, sh <laughs> The struggle crit, though. <laughs> nope, gonna get fully paralyzed. Yeah, GG. GG. And there it is. Derpy BD was gonna take it. I think. I, I wanna say that was loser's bracket because Drew lost earlier, right? I think Drew's out. Pretty standard teams on both sides so far. Sub protect, baby. Oh. Um, substitute actually not super common on Wormadam. Um, I think this is the second time of us seeing it because you substitute is one of those moves that you only have one instance of. Rodom really likes to run it. What else have we seen it on? I think I've seen it on Leafy on. Oh, the brick break critical there, huge. And the mirror oh, shot miss. Oh, and the mirror shot miss. That's rough. I'm surprised we haven't seen more Rotom, but I guess, um, I guess it makes some sense. What do you guys think about the decision to save that low HP Wormadam, by the way? Um, it's. I, I feel like I've seen it pay off so many. I've seen like so many players in this match where we throw like 15% Wormadams and get them back up to 20% because nothing can deal damage through them to like through like leftovers. Ooh. Okay, it's Crobat. Oh, get it. It's Christian really risky Bale. in my opinion. I think I would like to see a Garo sack there instead. Okay. Actually, good damage there considering everything. <laughs> Did crit, but. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how the format would have played out if it would have been doubles. Oh gosh, man, that would be crazy. Yeah. Doubles with Dynamax. <laughs> yeah. It feels like CDN's win con is basically get that Crobat in, hope that you maybe win the speed tie against the opposing Crobat, just use your flying type attacks to KO everything at this point. But that Intimidate from Gyarados can be really, really big to deny it from actually picking up KOs. Yeah. I can actually see CDN picking up a win here. Yeah, I agree with Aaron. I think this is going to be a game between Crobats and might come down to a speed tie. Unless, unless this Leafeon, like, is similar to KO the Crobat with, like, a cr or the, um, Crobat Mass here, yeah. Um, because if you can quick attack the, the opposing Crobat with the Leafeon, you're in good shape, but, yeah, it's looking kind of awkward. I think you play for the Rock Throw Miss here if you're Souls. Yeah, I think you should go for another... Oh, okay. It does go for the quick attack. I don't think yeah, that's the correct right play. There. Ooh, okay, Souls oh. wins the speed tie here. I think that's game. Game. There's no way through Heracross anymore. Oh, actually, there is. You can play the mini game because Plucked is 5%, right? So you can heal for a while, right? Yeah. And you just have to, if you rock throw in the Heracross, which is in, you can win or Thunder Wave it. I mean, yeah. Pro Pass needs to be at full HP to take that Brick Break, so. I think that's just game. Does not get the triple protect. Or oh, I guess he got triple, actually. Oh, we see Love the to see the shinies soul. in this, uh. These sprite versions are so cute. Gyarados gonna come out against this. Interesting matchup. Crunch does a lot of damage here, but... Um, we do see the Bronzor on Crash and Basham's side. Um, Oaken is running that Wormadam lead. Pokemon um, 
Round three did not start. Okay, I think this is just round two losers right now. Secret power does so much to float. So much damage, yeah, wow. Um, and he is gonna survive another non-crit crunch, I believe. Um, unless with those were low rolls. There's 29! Yep! Secret nice. power takes out the float soul. Stealth Rocks, once again, is just, it's just so good here, right, for everyone. Like, it feels like basically when you're playing this format, you're assuming Stealth Rocks should, like, you, your teams should account for the fact that every everyone's gonna have Stealth Rocks set up, basically, on the first two turns of the game. <laughs> Cross comes in, gets that KO. Bronzer comes out now. This bronzer, you know, definitely a good switch into to some of the stealth rock damage. Uh, yeah. I'm really curious on what kind of pressure it's going to be putting on against the Heracross right now. Wormadam I'm going to come in now. Um, so I, I guess we're going to see this matchup now. Really interesting. Um, Iron Defense, obviously, there. Uh, we saw Flash being run on these Bronze Wars. <laughs> Sparing us some of the pain, yeah, just switching out there. Nice mm. hidden power from Warmadam yeah, there. Yeah. That's the super effective hidden power on the Crobat switch in. Very nice play. So in power electric just does so much to Crobat. Crobat trying to go for the flinch with the bite here. Actually gets it, but doesn't really <laughs> gain anything out of it because Leftovers just recovers the HP back. I guess Crashim just giving up his Crobat here. I'm not really sure why. Those last two turns were so risky, right? Because it, yeah. it feels like if you just give up Crobat, like that's your hair your best hair cross answer out of the way, so. Very fortunate flinches to keep the Crobat around. Crobat definitely would have just fainted to a hidden power otherwise. Ooh, Trying to get the power. secret power. It does oh, get the paralysis, the paralysis immediately. But the problem is now, Iron Defense, and there's no special attackers from Oaken. I just don't think Crash and Basham can stall out all three Pokemon here. Yeah. Um, oh, and a crit too. I mean, yeah, you're dealing with the Paras, and the, the tough thing here is that, oh, another full Para, wow. Well, That's, actually, yeah. super and, worth and noting, like this... the Bronzor doesn't run leftovers, it runs Citrus Berry. Oh, but it's oh, Recycle it's Citrus cycle. Berry. Oh, boy. And it missed. That's and so interesting. You know, actually gets attacks off, but extra sensory, so much PP. Like, oh, this Rattler is doing absolutely nothing. You're winning the damage trade off and leave yeah. you plus hair across the back. I just don't know how much damage they really do. Oh, go the, the self destruct. Do a little, uh, good amount of damage there. I feel like Leftovers would still be more healing, and it's less PP dependent, right? And uh, Le Leafeon has mm. the ability to go for the Rock Smashes now, but there's so many Iron Defense PP, and he can only get so many Rock Smash Defense drops. Can Crash him? Actually, uh, I love do this. This? Set. this is this is incredible. Effectively three v one, because like you said earlier, most of the the format is physical, right? So the lack of special damage really really benefits a bronze set like this absolutely yeah like look at Oaken's team every single pokemon here is a physical attacker except for like hidden power electric wormadam which mm -hmm. got taken out um crobat wouldn't have gotten past this i don't know if floats could have gotten past this it, like crunch is neutral to bronze or in this game right like it's just Her he basically needs exactly a heracross crit but extra sensory is going to do a decent amount to heracross honestly i mean like bronzer's offense obviously isn't great all right but... heracross all down to you it is going to be substitute on the Heracross. That's actually huge, but extra sensory is enough to break it. That's 25%. Yeah. I Open like this up, though. Try this. to stop, uh, you know, hope for a full para. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, wow, Bronzor doesn't three times in a row attacks through. Not going to get it. Brick Break Brick, crit is not going to happen, Brick, but he gets the full <gasps> para. The para finally comes through. Okay, okay. You got a couple more paras. There's Brick Break. No crit. Oh, not no going to get it. And Bronzor is actually going to solo oh, through. That's crazy. Wow. What a great game. Does it have recovery oh. though? I don't believe so, right? It's just lefties, I think, right? Yeah. Oh man, okay. <laughs> Extra Sentry is doing a good amount. Oh, he flinches there too. Okay, so there's the up switch. Oh, that feels so bad. Yeah. It's, good. it's important to know when to bail, though. Like, sunk cost is yes. definitely a thing that people fall for in VGC. For oh, sure. it's an Earthquake Bronzor! <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh... Hold on. I'm behind. Wait. Oh, yeah, I didn't even see. Actually, really nice to deal with Tom Probopath specifically, so... Yeah, yeah. A little, little counter there. Wow. All right. Nice uh, Heracross thieving. Right. Beef substitute Heracross here. And Secret Rider does not break the sub, either. Okay, there's the Kadabra. We've seen it before. Oh, uh, Bronzer looks pretty strong here, though. Yeah. These guys know what they want to do. They use this a fast-paced game so far, so. Absolutely. Yep, they're not wasting any time. <laughs> there's the hit. All right, <laughs> Pro Pest goes down. I take it all back. 
Earthquake Bronzor <laughs> seems pretty great. It's huge that Bronzor didn't miss too many of those. It still yeah. has 3 PP to remain, and that's actually so important for like the late game maybe against Kadabra. Man, the, the Flash Flash is just so obnoxious to deal with. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Earthquake hitting here would be huge. Nice, it gets a hit. I guess this now. is nice for this matchup too, not just for the Pro Pass matchup, because Earthquake doesn't have to break exactly, the sub on yeah. Kadabra, right? Yeah. Oh, it's so clutch, it hits both! Holy <laughs> sh this Bronzor, oh my god. <laughs> It's actually night and day from like the grass knot that we saw last time. Yeah. What a good decision to run Earthquake on that. Super quick match here. Very quickly played 55 turns. Other uh, losers quarters, Reggie versus the Noxter is still going on, I believe. Oh, um, so for me. oh no, okay. Reggie did win here. There was two uh, Wormadams in this match. Um, Graveler on the Noxter's side here. Our, I think number one or number two seed, the Noxter has been eliminated by Reggie. And, um,. Looks like we're, um, yeah, going to losers semis. Robat lead versus Heracross lead. The Heracross is named Mango Losers Run. I think Largest Knife <laughs> has a really long losers run behind him. Especially. <laughs> right, Heracross started over. the game with a secret power, by the way. Yeah. That's interesting. Created right. to Gligar, wow. Time to see the power of Roselia, I guess. Oh my god, the double leech seed from Ridge. It just feels so tough because there's so like there are a lot of good return users, right? Like Leafeon, Gyarados, Heracross, and so Gligar, I'm not sure it's like the most optimal user of it. And in the end, oh my gosh, Warmadam gets that sub up and Gligar faints from the leech seed, so yeah. It's the Roselia that's so huge here. Like it felt like largest life, you know, definitely had a good advantage. The Monferno's nice here too, but <laughs> Defense curl. Defense oh. curl. Oh, I, I saw somebody talking about this. I think this is a baton pass. Like yeah. defense oh. curl. Oh, don't know accuracy. The there it is. Hello plus four defense Rodom. Very interesting. Yeah, I'm really curious to see how this does. Oh gosh, how do you break through Rotom now? That's such a cool team from Large's Life. Fence curl, baton pass, law punny, ladies and gentlemen. That is crazy. Wow. This is the type of shit that I make these tournaments for. Because this is the type of shit that skilled players come up with when you put enough money on the line. <laughs> <laughs> so true, honestly. Leech Seed's still doing a lot of pressure, though. It is. Monferno back in. I, th I think one thing to note is if Hazards were banned, somebody brought this up in chat earlier, um, Vespiquen is an option in this game. You can get like defense order, heal order, right? Which is huge for mm -hmm. like stalling. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this is massive. Is Reggie actually going to take this Rodom down? Oh. That thief on the Rodom was huge, yeah. So nice, yeah. There's frustration, Lapani. Ooh, really risky switch here. Wow, yeah, yeah I holy don't know. Gosh, that's a lot of damage. Oh. If it doesn't get para here, oh, of course. Oh, it gets para though! No shot. No shot, Reggie that just was... did that. Oh, wait, Monf oh, and they just give up on Ferno! Oh, I think oh, that's very. Sh Bronze was at full health here. I would actually think there's a chance it pulls it off. Okay, it does manage to get that KO. I think if, if the Roselia had gone down earlier, this would have been a different story. Like, if yeah. it hadn't gone I think this would have been a very, very different story because Roselia, now, like, like, showing its power here is so hard. Yeah. Well played, though. Cool see see these, like, mm -hmm. I was just saying, cool to see some of these lesser used picks Rotom, Lopini, Monferno. Even, I mean, Bronzor, I wouldn't say is a little super lesser used, but it's cool to see them all making a, an appearance here in our final or our last yep. game of the tournament. This was a really good game. All right. Well. Congrats to Large's Life for fourth place. Also $75. I'm excited to see how things change on like a best of three. Also, one thing that we didn't like that I don't know if we've talked about yet, but like in a in a thing like this where you can change teams between games, like I think I think it's always really interesting if players choose to like keep the same six mons but change a yeah. couple moves, add hidden power, or like yeah. change whatever. We have a game by the way. Prim Plup lead from Goal coming out this time. And the knockoff. Alright. Ooh. Knockoff's always nice, you know, just get rid of those leftovers. Everyone's running leftovers in this format, so just deny them recovery. Oh, grass here uh, with Leafeon and the Roselia. That is pretty interesting to see. Okay, gets All that right. Leech Seed off, too. 
No steel type revealed from Rage just yet. The other thing is the idea of Leech Seeding just to also heal your uh, your partner Pokemon, right? Like you don't necessarily need to just heal Roselle. You can switch it out to something that's a little bit low, give it a little bit more help uh, if you've gotten the seeds off. So, ooh, Ligar gets paralyzed. There's Heracross switches in, but not that risky of a switch in here. No clear answer to the Roselli as of right now, though, which makes this really tricky. Classic knockoff onto Heracross. We've seen that multiple times throughout the course of this event. But not too much damage coming out from Gao's side right now. <laughs> Deep steals away the splash plate oh, from the float zone. Interesting. <laughs> and a return just kills. Is running return on that float so Still no steel types revealed. On Reggie's side, it's only the Wormadam so far. Zelia, though, always a consistent switch in here. Leech Seed is always safe. Go for a Stun Spore, but, you know, you do have to be a little bit nervous about Gligar switching in, and that's kind of a wasted turn. And, yep, there is that Gligar. Oh, Okay, I love love the Giga Drain there. Just consistent damage. Yeah, no risk. Yep. Uh, don't risk a miss there, and Gligar dangerously low now. You're in an awkward spot, right? Like, do you want to switch out that Gligar, for example? Zelia could capitalize off that with a Stun Spore, actually. That would be really neat. Maybe Gligar says, you know what? I'm not doing anything at this point anyway. Uh, I'll just go for a knockoff. And then if Reggie, like, over predicts, then loses your item. But goes for the safe Giga Drain, gets that KO. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. What seed really moved to half here? Wow! Triple hit doesn't break the sub. <laughs> Well, I was still holding on here. There's still definitely some lose conditions for him, but man, just without the... I guess the thing is, Heracross being down, not even that big of a deal? Um, Because there's not actually that much weak to Heracross, I guess. I guess getting past the Wormadam might be kind of hard, but there's always Leech Seed. Let's see. I think Leafy on here, definitely in a tricky position. Ooh, Rotom, okay, going for the sub, but... Let's see, bullet hit, <laughs> just two hits, so nice sub there. Yeah. Wave. I don't know if it's that, uh, that had broken the sub. There's like a five hit crit or something, but I, I like I like the decision to go for it there. Felt yeah, your the odds are definitely in your favor, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Well, we see the bite, do we see the, the flinch? We do not, and we see the return. And we probably see the Aqua Jet kill. There it is. There is a brick break of 45. So good. Wow. Yeah. No accuracy drop. Really well game. played, honestly. I thought by both players. Rock set up. Finally gets rocks up. I mean, that's that's absolutely critical, right? Just especially given Reggie's team so far, a lot of those Pokemon do take a fair amount of damage from the South Rock, especially that Gyarados. Because if you get Herod there, man, that, that feels really brutal because, like, Lopunny really relies on its speed. Oh. Just trying to go for a quick attack. Yeah, gets paired on the first one, gets it off the second. This is just not a good trade-off for the Probo Pass, right? Shockwave's doing a decent amount. The Rock Throw, it takes two to even break the substitute. You can miss the Rock Throw as well. So, Probo Pass basically came in, took like 40% of damage. I'm not sure that was really a great trade-off. Riddle's out. Man, the D from Rotom actually really big, stealing those leftovers away. So, that kind of recovery denial and something as bulky as yeah. Rotom is such a big deal. And, I mean, gosh, this Rotom has been on the field and it's done so much damage to Grotto and Probo Pass and is literally going to be nearly 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Kadabra is the final Pokemon for Goao. All right. Interesting. See some variety. See some switch ups. Psybeam just wow. takes out the Gligar. So I guess strong. Reggie's, yeah, I guess Reggie's deciding to sack it here. I think his Probo Pass just took so much from those Shockwaves. Oh, okay. The double switch. But it doesn't really work out too well for Go out there. I mean, yeah, reading into Lopunny, I think, switching out there, but Lopunny going for jump kick is really safe and just keeps getting damage on the board, which is really, really nice for AJ right now. Well, actually has the uh, numbers advantage right now. There smash. is the rock smash! Okay. Oh. Yeah, how are they gonna get through this Leafeon is the question. Boys, I hate to say it, but this one might come down to the to the coin flip. <laughs> How fitting would that be, man? Coin flip. It's like no quick attack on this Leafeon, by the way. Yep. Yeah, which, which is so interesting, right? Because, oh, the Q Charm too, okay. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, It's so interesting because Kadabra came out and it looked like Leafeon was baiting. Yeah, and then the side just came out. Holy shit. 
Oh, but Rodam's still up for the Heracross. The question is, does it run Thief? We've seen Counter on it, and we know Rock Tomb's on Gligar. Si oh my what? Side oh my it's god! How strong is Kadabra? Gawao Who's says I was modest. Like. Someone in chat says it's probably it's probably mind play it. Oh my That's gosh. insane. Alright, so we got Grand Finals. Gawao is gonna run it back versus um Sorry, versus Zorwasa and the Grands. Zorwasa coming in with a one win advantage because he is coming from winners. And finals, here we go. Thank you to everyone for tuning in for really, Thank yeah. You so much. Day, Thank basically. you everyone for joining me. Thank you everyone for organizing. Thank you everyone for watching. This has been so much fun. All right, we see the immediate Leafeon switch. Pretty standard stuff here, Stealth Rock set up for Goel. Yep. Always just really the safest option here. Uh, don't, if you bubble beam there and then the Leafeon comes in, you're just in a weird position, right? Because it's like, you, you you feel forced to switch out the purple up, and rocks on turn one of the game is just so darn good. Here's the Crobat switch. Takes a lot of damage. Yeah, that, that's really aggressive. I feel like Crobat is definitely one of your best late game sweepers in a lot of these games. So to bring it in on a, like on a return for 50%, maybe predicting a grass one or something, but still feels pretty risky there. Mm -hmm. Great return by Zorasa though, right? Because even if Primplup stays in there, what in the world is it going to do? Not much, but... Ooh, wing attack and just return. I mean, that's so much damage on a Crobat, but it's actually Citrus, okay. <laughs> so, not in KO range from something like a quick attack, but like you just said, Wolfie, yeah, like Crobat typically feels like the late game sweeper, and now it's like, okay, you've just taken so much damage onto it, so I like go out, maybe content to just give it up in this game, but it feels bad, especially if like, it, it looks pretty good as a late game sweeper uh, in this matchup as well, uh, especially against, yeah, the, the two Pokemon don't resist flying right now. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just am. curious why we're going to come sooner. Like, even if you just want to bait, like, scout from Pokemon Pass and switch it immediately out again, like... Yeah. I, I'm a little concerned there. Time to um, <laughs> get some beverages. We might be in for a PP stall. We've already seen Leftovers on this. It's not Shed Shell. So, yeah, this Warmadam is about to get PP stalled, boys. Thunderwave set up. Oh, it's in power fighting! Oh, oh, Never mind, I spoke too right. soon, boys. The pluck specifically gets like it's telling that Leafeon is doing so much more damage with something that's not even super effective. Oh, oh, the torrent oh, crits! Pretty <laughs> point now. Go Ooh, okay. Perfect time to get Fulsa win. We uh that explains a little bit by the way why um got Goa was like willing to get damage on that Leafeon in exchange for the crimp bug. Because he was trying to set it for like, because with dual water types, getting rid of Leafy on mm -hmm. like, so much more than Sorwasa really wants to switch into this thing, right? Okay, big crit oh, there. Critical on the extra yeah. sensory. There's a crit return okay. for 10%. Crit and knockoff. Oh, double crit! <laughs> All right. Dude, is, this game. He has three crits in a row. Oh, everyone it's has Eric, a scope. That's not gonna... Nope. He has like one oh, more chance. Does not get him. Yeah, needs it now. Even this with, even if he does get it. Yeah, I'm not even sure it would have been enough because Crobat is oh. honestly, it's, you know, Floatzel is, it's basically Floatzel 1v9. It, there's just no way. You're down too many resources and <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> this Bronzor just, dude. Yeah. He's going to survive 1v5. the Crobat. It actually 1v5. The Bronzor. Oh. The little that Bronzor that could. Hidden power. It is fighting. Oh. Oh, it might, actually, this might be electric. Hold on. Yeah. If you have Probe Pass, by the way, you can bring it in now, trap the Wormit on at Dan. But yeah, no, no, yeah. no dice. Yeah, I think this is like zero steel types from Goao actually on this team. He runs Beebrell and uh, Toby Dickinson. Ooh, oh, okay. it doesn't even K. Oh, with yeah. the aerial ace. That's Some brutal. big damage. Oh. It's for the quick attack. Okay. Makes sense. Seems like it's That's a great knock. trade off. Heracross There's the Heracross. Yep. Yeah, Ooh, good but it's a substitute. Ah, oh, that was probably his only it's opportunity. The you also, thing, though. I'm sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, oh I, I was just saying, like, the, the one thing here is that as long as you don't get paralyzed in the last turn with Heracross, you can stay in here and sack it and make sure the sub goes down. Um, yeah. Gigaterin's gonna wow. kill a lot. It doesn't switch out. Oh my god! Oh, Eddie Chris! That Big is. Crit. Wow, oh. just has not had the right rolls today, and that, I mean. I think because it has Earthquake and how much damage it was doing, like this, this Probe Pass was actually decent for this endgame anyway, but that crit is just heartbreaking to see. Yeah. 
Brick break 22%. Oh, I'm gonna do it. Oh. He needs a crit. He yes. needs exactly a crit. One in 16, baby. Not, not gonna get crit. it. Oh. And that's gonna be it. Zorwasa Zorwasa. takes home first place $400 of the $1,000 prize pool. Gawawa is gonna take home 250. Congrats. What a fantastic tournament. Congrats. In the end, perseverance, I think, is one of the things where, like, just that mental fortitude.